Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Spinning Venom, aka the Venom Vlog presents Carnage Week. I'm sorry, this episode uh, is two days late. It should have gone up on Friday, but with the trailer dropping on Thursday, I just was so busy making those videos. And then, uh, you know, it takes a while to edit, only because my computer is a little slow. Like, obviously, my laptop. If I was editing on that, uh, if that was still around, I would be going much faster with these videos. But uh, exporting and stuff has been taking a long time because I'm using an older PC right now until I can fix this laptop. So I apologize for the delay. On these videos um, I just needed after six videos in one day I was like all right I I've earned a couple days off uh, so we're gonna finish carnage week with this episode and our next episode but the next episode might be a little late too because I talked to um, what the artist that actually drew the storyline for the next uh, the carnage story we're gonna talk about and uh, I wanted to ask him just like five questions quick questions about the story so I sent them to him in a, in a DM on Facebook and he's gonna write me back as soon as he has time so I kind of want to give it at least another day or two to see if he responds and if he doesn't we'll just make the video and then I'll make a separate video about his responses to the questions uh, but I figured if I can combine them in one video that would be great so give me some time to finish uh, you know the last Carnage week episode and then after this we will continue to talk about Carnage we will I try to I'm trying to go in chronological order the best I can um, with these storylines that we talk about and we do discussions on I'm trying to do the best and I'm trying to mainly only focus on ones that you can still buy that are still in print in some form uh, and that's no exception here this story is called Carnage Unleashed and you can buy it two different ways you can get it in the Carnage Classic uh, trade paperback which we you know pulled a lot of stories from this past week um, or you can get it in the Venom Carnage Unleashed graphic novel which has a, a, you know, that story in it and some other Venom stories that we'll talk about in the near future as well. And there is some other cool Carnage stuff we're going to talk about, and we're definitely going to do an episode where uh, the, the DC characters meet the Marvel characters involving Carnage and Venom, so be on the lookout for that episode too. So Carnage isn't going anywhere just because we're finishing up Carnage Week with this episode and the next one doesn't mean we're going to stop talking about Carnage. we got a lot more Carnage stuff to discover and talk about and, and discuss to full detail, and we'll just pepper it in from here on out. Uh, but again, like I said, I'm going to try to go in chronological order the best I can. And today we're going to make a slight exception. We're talking about Carnage Unleashed. And Carnage Unleashed actually takes place a little bit before some of the stuff we talked about in the last episode. And in the last episode for Carnage Week, we talked about the one-shots that were in Carnage Classic. The Spider-Man Annual, Amazing Spider-Man 28 Annual, uh, the uh, Mind Bomb storyline, and the It's a Wonderful Life. So this storyline, Carnage Unleashed, takes place before Mind Bomb and It's a Wonderful Life. So this is when Ravencroft is still f functioning. It still has a ton of funding. Uh, Ashley Kafka is still running the place, John Jameson still head of security, and the place hasn't been shut down uh, like it was in It's a Wonderful Life. We have the, the building still intact, and they're still working, and they're trying to crack the nut that is Cletus Cassidy. And that's kind of the crux of the story, but there's also a lot of meta elements to it. Uh, it was written by Larry Hama, who's a very good writer. I feel like in this storyline, you know, a lot of writers, when they jump on a, a book, they are trying to find their footing with the character and trying to figure out, you know, what their voice for the character is going to be and working with the artists that they work with. And the artists on this book, there's actually three artists. Uh, there's Pencil Breakdowns by Andrew Wildman. Uh, there's Pencil Finishes by Art Nichols. And I'm sorry I had to write this down because there's a lot of names here. Uh, and Ink Finishes by Joe Rubenstein. And then Tom Smith did colors. So there's four people working on the the art of this book. And uh, and it kind of shows in some scenes. There's some inconsistencies with the art, although I think overall it looks pretty cool. Andrew Wildman also drew the Venom 2099 storyline as well, which we'll talk about at some point in the future. Uh, but this storyline, Larry Hama, uh, who ended up becoming one of the longest running writers on Venom in the 90s miniseries, he wrote like four or five of these miniseries that came out in the 90s. And I believe this was his first one. And it has a very meta element to it, like I said. It's basically about Maximum Carnage, the video game. Uh, it, Venom is out in San Francisco, and he sees and he hears about the popularity of Carnage. And that's kind of like in a meta way, too. Because after Maximum Carnage came out, the character blew up, and everyone was loving Carnage and loving the character. And Venom was feeling like second uh, fiddle, and he kind of is like, all right, I'm going to go to New York, and I'm going to, um, you know, Carnage is getting involved with a video game. Like, there's this video game company that contacts Ravencroft and says, look, we want to make a video game based on Cletus Cassidy and the Carnage symbiote. Can you get him to sign over, like, his likeness and rights to us? 
And I guess Ashley Kafka agrees to this, but she says there's only one stipulation. I want to be able to use the money that you make, like some of the profits, and give it to the victims of uh, the families, uh, you know, the families of the victims of carnage. And I want to do some good with this money. And so, uh, you know, Ashley Kafka is like, those are my terms. And then Carnage had one term, which was I want to be able to beta test the video game. And uh, and so, yeah, it's a really weird storyline. Um, I'm not a big fan of this story, actually, so we, it might not be a long episode, but there is a lot to talk about. So Venom, on his trip to New York to, like, you know, stop, put a stop to this, he's like, I don't want a Carnage video game coming out, I don't want Carnage to have access to people and be online and be on the internet and stuff, like, I'm going to go and take him down, because obviously the news talks about this, so uh, he's like, no, no, I'm going to go put a stop to this. So he takes a bus, and it takes him like a whole like couple days to get from San Francisco to New York. And I'm like, I know he's Venom, he can't just swing there or whatever, but I'm like, there's got to be a better way for him than to just take a bus. And the reason he takes a bus is because it sets up this this female character named uh, Kirsten, who's like singing on the bus next to him, and she is heading to New York to meet a guy she met online named Clive. This is the big thing about this book. It's about the internet. It's about the beginning of the internet and video games and things like that and uh it's, it's kind of a comment on on that in a way um and i think larry hama even created microtransactions <laughs> well and we'll get to that here in a second but um so this girl kirsten she's on her way to meet this guy named clive that she met online who reached out to her and said he can help her and you know uh, move ahead in her life and so she says okay I'm, I'm going to new york to meet with him and uh, and venom is like sitting next to her on the bus and he's just annoyed by her because she just keeps singing songs and she's rhyming words with other words that he you know he does he's like you can't rhyme those words so you can see a little bit of a, the journalist in eddie like he may have been a lot of things but uh, he was you know at least larry hama's version he was impeccable with his words he he actually uses a lot of big words and vocabulary in this storyline so i thought that was an interesting addition to the character that wasn't kind of there before or fleshed out before larry hama definitely uh tried to flesh that out in this storyline and uh, and so Venom, you know, finds out about this video game. He's coming to New York. Carnage uh, gets access to the internet. He's a beta tester for his own video game, and uh, and the creators of the video game are like, all right, we're gonna release the game for free at like midnight uh, after we get this last beta test in with Carnage. Uh, like he, Cletus is actually gonna play it. And meanwhile, Cletus is, has a new doctor named Dr. Paza, who is under the orders of Ashley Kafka. And Dr. Paza has had m much success with serial killers in the past. So she's been transferred to Ravencroft to try to crack, uh, you know, Cletus Cassidy. And she's making a breakthrough. But what she doesn't realize is everything Cletus is telling her, he's hiding the facts. So he's like, oh, you know, my, gr my grandma hated me. I don't know why. And then they show a scene where um, he like, you know, like messes with his grandma and scares the crap out of her. And then uh, and then later on, they show a scene where he trips her down the stairs and she, you know, kills her. Uh, and then there's a scene where he says, oh, my mom had this dog and uh, the dog always hated me. I don't know why. And then you see him like hurting the dog. And then uh, and then even a scene where his mom catches him killing the dog. But he's not telling those details to Dr. Paza. So she's thinking she's making a, you know, like a breakthrough. Like, oh, he was misunderstood. He was all these things. Um, so he's revealing only half of his story and he's just doing it to buy himself time. So he gets in this last beta test and he's actually able to go into the computer and uh, travel across the phone lines and everything and uh, come out of the other end and hurt people and threaten people and kill people. And he tells the video game developers, like, put me online right now um, or I'll, you know, I'll come through the computer and kill you. And uh, and so you got to put me online so I can have access to all these wonderful people all over the world and, you know, murder them. And I guess this guy's like, well, no no press is bad press so he's kind of an, a monster this video game this video game developer is like uh, totally willing to use a serial killer to make money like it's so goofy this video this this whole storyline is so goofy uh, and but he even says like this is where i says larry hama may have come up with microtransactions the guy says we're going to release the game for free online and then every time we update it we're going to charge people for that and i was like oh wow that microtransactions like that's crazy that in 1995 larry hama was thinking about microtransactions for video games so uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the story really. And so when Venom shows up to New York, he sees the girl go off with Clive. Clive kind of looks like a drug dealer. He's got like track marks on his arm from shooting up heroin. And you know, Eddie doesn't, he's like feels protective of her, but then at the same time he looks up and a building, like a, a thing gets thrown out of a building and it's carnage. It's like, it's all very convenient storytelling. It's not very well crafted. Um, and not that it maybe should be, I guess, with the overall plot of this, it's like, it's a goofy meta story idea. Um, but I feel like this was Larry Hama just figuring out what he wanted to do and finding his voice for the characters. And he got, you know, exponentially better at each miniseries he was writing. Um, but he still had some wacky ideas for the character. But he at least wrote them a little bit more consistent. Uh, but in this one, 
four issue miniseries, pretty good artwork, uh, okay storyline. Venom and Carnage fight. It's just one on one, so that's kind of cool because every time they've met before this, Spider Man's been involved, or Spider Man had a one on one with Carnage. So this is Venom getting his one on one with Carnage, and uh, and it, it goes down pretty well. And and Venom, although every issue seems to end with Venom going, I'm gonna beat up Carnage. I'm, and you're just like, then get to it, dude. And finally, in the last issue, they fight. Uh, and then also, what you you know we learn in the story is Eddie Brock makes a mistake. He keeps telling the girl he doesn't want to go with the name Eddie Brock because you know people might know that name uh, as him is Venom because his identity is kind of out there so he says his name is Freddy Block and you're just like oh and uh, and it fools this girl and she's like okay fine his name is Freddy Block and she calls him Freddy she's like Freddy don't do it and he tracks her down with this you know drug dealer guy and he ends up scaring the guy to death and the guy falls off a ledge and then like falls to his death right in front of them and she says, what are you doing? He goes, he was a drug dealer anyway. Like, you shouldn't have been around him. He took your money. Because when she showed up and saw Clive, the, the drug dealer guy, she gave him, like, all of her savings. And she's like, here. And he's like, all right, I'll be back later. And he was very, he was written very, like, skeevy. And then all of a sudden you find out, oh, he wasn't skeevy at all. He was a, a journalist. Uh, so Eddie Brock just caused the death of an innocent journalist who was undercover, uh, which we, you know, that happened in Funeral Pyre. That happened a couple times already. So it was like definitely a trope that's already been used with Venom. Um, and you find out the guy was an undercover journalist trying to uh, break this big story about this drug ring in New York. And then after that, he was going to, you know, he was using that money to like, pay a tip off but he was going to get it back because you know you know working with the police and stuff or whatever and he was going to get it back and give it back to the girl and, and then they were going to go have a happy life together seemed like a dumb thing to do why would you get her the girl involved if you're this undercover guy from across the country and all that it just it's really bad on a lot of levels uh and then so of course eddie's responsible for the death of an innocent so he has that weight on him but he doesn't even have time to really digest that because then he gets right into fighting carnage and then the two of them go at it uh, john jameson comes in he's got a big gun he's trying to kill carnage and they're all going through all the the rigmarole of fighting each other and then right at the very end when carnage was full-on gonna die like he's falling out of a building the symbiote's wrapping like pulling away from him and he is just gonna smack right into the pavement it's like all right this is it this is what venom wanted he wanted to kill carnage here we go and because of maximum carnage and the lesson he learned from spider-man about you know uh, trying to tap into the goodness that's still in him he saves carnage right at the last second and Carnage lives, and he gets captured by John Jameson and brought back to Ravencroft with Dr. Ashley Kafka. Uh, and meanwhile, Dr. Pazzo and this other lady that was like the secretary to the, the video game creator, they both get to like punch the video game creator because, you know, he was, uh, he's a bad guy. Uh, so they got to like get the final blow and knock him out and have him arrested too. So they had a little something to do as well. Uh, and then at the end, there's this cliffhanger where the young girl, Kirsten, who was like, working, you know, like who Venom killed her boyfriend guy that she met on the internet, who was not really a drug dealer kind of guy, that whole story. Uh, Kirsten ends up uh, calling her mom and saying like, mom, uh, this guy named uh, Freddie Block, I found out is Eddie Brock. He's Venom and he just killed somebody I loved who was a good person. And he's like, she's like, will you do something about it? And then her mom sitting in chat, I was like, yeah, uh, I'll, uh, he's my next assignment. And so we'll learn later, like Larry Hama, you know, doesn't write the next like Venom story or two. I think they go like someone else writes them. So we'll talk about those when we get there. Uh, but then he, Larry Hama does come back and kind of finish those threads. Venom becomes like an, a, an agent for like the CIA or something for a short time, Eddie Brock does, called License to Kill. And there's all these other miniseries that I'm probably not going to talk about because they're just not available to buy right now. But if they ever do come out, those will be episodes I make later on. So we'll learn more about the Larry Hama run, you know, uh, later on down the road. Uh, but for now, this is Carnage Unleashed. It was a really wacky story. Art's pretty good. I mean, it's it's not very consistent with all the different artists that are on it. But it got better as it went on. Like, in the four issues, they got stronger and stronger. Uh, but, uh, and I wish I could say the same thing for about the writing because I like Larry Hama. He's awesome. But I just, this book was one of my least favorite um, when I was a kid when I read it. And, uh, and probably because the meta stuff just well, I wasn't clicking with me. But now as an adult, I don't care about it either. So uh, this story didn't do anything to win me over. Whereas, like, uh, Enemy Within, I don't remember liking that story too much when I was a kid. And I kind of liked it a little bit more now as an adult. 
So uh, yeah, this one didn't really change my mind, but it's still fun. I mean, it's still a fun storyline, and it does set up future stories that Larry Hama wrote that I hope they release. I hope Marvel releases a trade called the Larry Hama Venom stories, because I think there's like four more miniseries he did. Uh, one where he like fights Venom, and I, th I think I don't know, fights Venom fights Wolverine, I think Tooth and Claw. I can't remember if he wrote that one or not, but there's like License to Kill. There's all these ones where where Venom Eddie Brock was like a CIA agent, like they hired him to do stuff for them, and he like got a badge and a gun and everything. It was like really weird times, uh, but they're fun stories uh, nonetheless. So you guys let me know what you think of this mini series down below in the comments. And thank you guys for being so patient with me for uh, the videos. I will definitely have more for you very soon. And we're going to go right back to just doing like daily videos. Any movie news pops up, I'll do them. Any comic discussions I want to have, we'll do them. And we'll try to stick to one episode a day or one every two days for a while, just until I can catch up with work and life. And then uh, and I can get back to, you know, creating things once a day for you guys. Uh, but I promise you at least five episodes a week regardless. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.